we always make that joke. We'll see those commercials on TV yeah. and they'll be like, you know, and this and that and that and this. Side effects wanna... includes death. Exactly. It's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I want to I want to take that. I think I'll just live with the problem. <laughs> yeah. Side effects include losing your Second Amendment rights. <laughs> yeah. Meet the Pressers with Matt Mallory and Clint Necro. Brought to you by Public Safety and Education and the Trigger Pressers Union. This episode is brought to you by Steel City Ammunition. Can't find ammo? We've got it. We'll ship it and our prices are fair. Mountain Man Medical. The right medical training and gear should be accessible to every American. Mantis. Mantis X helps shooters suck less. Meet the Pressers is sponsored by Next Level Training, Saber Red, Cutting Edge Bullets, the USCCA, ASP, Common Sense Self-Defense, and T1 Ammunition. Meet the Pressers is also generously supported by other fine companies, ranges, and our Patreon members. Thank you. Welcome, everyone, to Meet the Pressers. My name is Clint Macro, and this is my esteemed colleague and co-host, Matthew Mallory. Meet the Pressers is a safe place for trigger pressers, people that exercise their Second Amendment rights to congregate, fellowship, and talk about training, gear, guns, political activism, and sometimes religion. Today, we have a very special guest who, uh, Matt, I would like you to do the introduction. Kim Petters. Welcome, Kim. And uh, Kim, uh, vets for the peace, clerk for the peace, for the peace. Oh. <laughs> clerk of the peace. No, that was a recent, this last election. Mm -hmm. um, it was a, two, a last minute, two month campaign, and uh, it was countywide and against a... Uh, person whose family has held that position for the last two decades so you know two months wasn't enough but I mean I came in close especially in a blue district as a Republican lost about a little less than five percent wow yeah, so, I, ran for, I ran for school board years ago and that was kind of the thing I went to school there grew up there left military came back and I ran against people that had been there stayed there their entire life so yeah. um, took a little bit of the pie away but didn't win it so there's much more right. to you than just running for public office. Yeah. Why don't you continue on with that introduction? <laughs> <laughs> the, the screen locked up on me. So that threw me off. Oh, it threw you off. You were frozen. Squirrel. Oh. Sorry, about. my internet is a little unstable right now. Homeschool. All the kids are home. Yeah. They're, all on, all the internet. they're all the internet. I shut them off. I go in and, and uh, block their <laughs> Mac address. Like it's not working. I don't know what's going on. I don't, I don't know what's up. <laughs> It'll be working again in about 35 minutes. <laughs> so so you are a, an Air Force veteran? Yes. And also pro medical marijuana or pro right. pro cannabis. Which is right. Okay. Right. That's right. Yeah. So I mean, so I was in the military for 10 years. Um, I was medical admin and public health. Um <clears throat> when I deployed. Uh, you know, when you deploy, it doesn't really matter what your job is. Uh, when you're there, if they need help, anything. that's it. That's it. And uh, the Marines next door, they needed help. The gunnery sergeant came in and they needed help with the human remain missions. And I went out there, did it. They didn't say human remain missions. They said HR missions. I had no idea what it meant, but I said, okay, I'll help. Um, found out real quick. And Gunny just said, hey, you handled that real well. Will you help us the rest of deployment? And I did, right? So, you know, all the human remain missions of all our brothers and sisters in the entire AOR came through where I was. Wow. Um, and so, you know, I, I came home and um, I had PTSD. I mean, I'm one of those people. I put my whole self into things and, yep. um, you know, it stayed with me. It was every single day. And, you know, so I get out of the military, get medically retired out of the military. Um crazy situation happens in our family where I inherit two more kids on top of my own two, both their mom and dad had passed away and no life insurance, just retired out of the military. What am I going to do? And so we left Nebraska where I was stationed, came to Delaware and, um, you know, I was, I was taking the meds. Uh, let me know if anything's off limit. You guys can edit whatever you want, but I'm not going to filter. Um, so I was one of those veterans. I like visuals. 
Um, I was on all these medications. There was something for sleep, something for anxiety, something for depression, all addictive, right? And um, so I was doing all that, handling, you know, this family situation, doing everything we could. Um, and, you know, a few years went by and I'm like, the pills are really getting to me. They're not really helping. And I saw on the internet that vets had been having um, success with cannabis. And I'm like, no, you know, no, you know, to me, it's drugs that would make me a bad mom. And, you know, I'm breaking laws. But I was desperate. So I tried it. I called up my brother-in-law and said, hey, will you get me some? I didn't know where to get it. And it worked. <laughs> it worked right away. Let me tell you the very first thing that I ended up coming off of anxiety meds and sleep meds. And let me tell you, everyone who saw me, I didn't tell anyone what I was doing because I felt like a really bad person for doing it. Yeah. Um, but I was feeling better and everyone's like, oh, you're looking so good, this and that. And when I finally came off the depression medication, I was like, okay, I heard that there's a medical marijuana program in my state. Maybe I can like get access. And they did have PTSD as a qualifying condition because, you know, no doctor is allowed to decide the government decides who's right. allowed to take this medication. And mm -hmm. so it was a qualifying condition, but it had a lot of barriers. And so I still having PTSD pretty bad at the time, but coming off everything and healing, I was in the healing process. Mm -hmm. Didn't know a soul in Delaware had moved here, no family, no village, no nothing. Oh. I said, come one way or another, I'm going to make sure all vets have better access to this. Cause you know, vets are dropping left and right. Um, 70% of the vets seen at the VA that kill themselves have benzos in their system, you know? Um, and I just, I guess I found what works and what helps. And I wanted other vets to have that. And so I went to a meeting. And the bill was to remove the barriers for PTSD so vets could get access. And, you know, I just went VFW to VFW introducing myself, American Legion to American Legion. And before I knew it, there was a whole army of people, we, of vets, we passed this bill. And then that's great. It's, I think, the, one of the top two reasons that people get, um, you know, get medical marijuana is PTSD in Delaware, which by the way, anyone who doesn't know, I would also like to throw in, cannabis is not addictive. Can of course people can abuse it. People can abuse going to the gym. Um, yeah, that's true. Yep. Cannabis is impossible to overdose from. Let me say that yep. again, impossible to overdose from. You know what can kill me? This. Yeah, true. You know that double the national average just an accidental overdose alone from start, since 2001, since the Iraq and Afghanistan wars kicked off. Wow, didn't know that. Okay, so so I stand very confidently in what I did in the bill that I passed, but now comes the problem that if you use cannabis, you lose your Second Amendment rights, and that is not okay because number one, it is the only medication in the entire world that causes you to lose your rights. So. If I wanted to stay on the addictive stuff that makes me feel woozy and lightheaded and takes a toll on my body, I could keep those rights. Mm -hmm. But if I want to take a little puff off this vape pen, mm -hmm. then I'm a bad person and I lose my rights. I am no longer able to protect myself and I'm now a criminal, even though if I have a card, I am following state orders mm -hmm. or state laws and doctor's orders. All because it is a schedule one drug. Yep. And let me just say one more thing and throw a plug in on that. So people understand because they I really, money. really, really want to reach the people in the gun community that are against this. I need you to listen to me. Schedule one drug means that it is, let me see, I wrote this down just in case, inherently dangerous and has no medicinal value. And that is why it is on a live 11 e, uh, uh, line 11E on the 4473 when you go to purchase a gun mm -hmm. because it's still schedule one. Do you know what isn't schedule one and what is allowed, what they say is not inherently dangerous and does have medicinal value? Opium. Methamphetamines, crack Meth. cocaine. Yep. So, you know, so we have, a, we, we, we have conflict in the law mm -hmm. and we're turning otherwise good people like myself 
who follow all other laws. I'm a contributing member to society. I have four children. Like I'm just, I'm an everyday mother. You should see the room I'm in right now. It's all decorated Valentine's Day. Like I just, so, but you, but you want to take a veteran like me who mm. found healing and say, not only can, am I going to make you choose between healing and second amendment rights, but it's also a kick in the teeth because those are rights that me and my brothers and sisters went and fought for. Right. Amen. So, you know, any question you have, any, anything, I, I, I will not back down from this topic and I'll tell you something else. To the listener out there who thinks this really doesn't affect that many people, um, or perhaps maybe you call cannabis reefer, I want you to know that you are the person that everybody hides it from. Hmm. Everybody uses it, or a good amount of people do. They're just not telling you. Yeah. I, I, I can assure you. Some of the number one, the largest, most well-known advocates in our country, gun advocates, NRA certified, everything, and I would never, ever name drop ever in a million years. They use cannabis. And let me tell you how I found out. So I go to like different things um, for advocacy, you know, in the near me. Um, and I drive, I drive there, um, you know, it's sometimes I'll fly, but I drive. Well, people know that I'm the cannabis and guns girl, which I'm not, I'm, I'm a second amendment advocate, but I, I'm known for that. And so this is what happens. So all these, all these advocates from all over the country meet at one place, one hotel, right? Half of them, I never met them because I'm relatively new to this arena. And I'll get to my hotel room the end of the night and I'll hear on my door. And I'm like, hmm, who the hell is that? And I'm like standing, I open the door and there's like, like a hero advocate of mine. I'm like, uh, can I help you? <laughs> And they're like, um, so I can't, I flew, I use cannabis too. And will you help me out? And I'm like, at first I'm like, is this a trick? Like, right. are you a trick? Are you trying to get me kicked out of here or something? And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the next thing I know, I kid you not, my hotel room balcony is full. Lit up. It's just <laughs> these people are afraid to say something. And I understand why I get it. Don't think I'm not afraid to hold this up. And this up in the same place. I am afraid of that. And by the way, anybody who's not um, familiar, this is an electronical joint. Yeah. <laughs> this has the really scary 99% THC. They make it stronger than they used to back in our day. We, let me tell you why I want something like that. Because number one, again, impossible to overdose from. So let's not worry about that. Number two, I prefer to take one little puff off this when I need it versus having to or smoke, and smoke and smoke and smoke. This guy, yeah, this little guy, this is what we're afraid of. It is not going to hurt you. It's good. It, it helps a lot of people. And I just don't understand. Gives you the munchies. Why more people aren't coming out about this. I mean, if everybody came out of the closet, we would be fine. So you, you read my, uh, my article that I wrote for the USCCA, and then uh -huh. they also interviewed you for an article that went into the magazine. I think they're the concealed carry magazine. Uh, did it come out last month? I think last, or, well, last this week. Month. Yeah, it came this out. Month, yeah. 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 The 18th, I think is when, um, Jared said it was coming out. So that being said, reading my article, what are your thoughts? You had sent me a message and said, you want to, you want to change my mind. And, and I think I, I, I want to change your mind. I, um, I want to change anyone who is on the fence in the, in the gun community. First of all, NRA, please don't hate me. I'm not against you. I, I don't ever say anything bad about you guys. I know it's like kind of a touchy subject, but um, I just want to know how someone can claim to be a staunch, and this not directed towards you, a staunch Second Amendment advocate for everybody except those who use cannabis. And I want to know how you can be staunch, but remain neutral. Why is not every single person standing up against this saying, this is a matter of freedom, personal choice and responsibility. No one is talking about smoking a joint and going to the gun range. No one, no more than they're talking about having some beers and going to the gun range. We sure. are talking about res 
responsible human beings. And also as a veteran, I've actually only known one veteran to be against it. And as a matter of fact, the most conservative veteran organization in, in the US, um, uh, the VFW, they just voted 80 to one. One person voted no on a, res a national resolution for research and use for veterans, because guess what? Mm. Veterans are dropping like flies. And what I wanna say to any veteran out there, you know, the, the Vietnam veterans, when they came back, three quarters of them ended up using, abusing alcohol. That was, that was their go-to. When the Iraqi and Afghanistan wars kicked off in 2001, when we came back, the VA was not prepared for us. Opiates being prescribed rose by 274%. That was the solution. So when you look at the homelessness rates for veterans, how many of them are addictive issues? Because what happened was, or unsolved mental health issues. Let me tell you something, being on these pills, it doesn't solve anything it numbs you. Yeah. You have got to face your demons. Mm -hmm. I have got to get past the smell of a charred body. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to do it on this crap. I'm going to do it on this. And it's going to hurt. And you're going to get better. Because you've got to feel the pain. And you've got to work through it. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck like those Vietnam veterans still sitting at that damn bar. And their liver is taking the hit. So what happened with the VA is everybody said, oh my gosh, you gave all these, all these pills to all these veterans. So they said, ah. and they took them back. What the hell do they think these veterans went and did? They went to the damn street. We, OEF, OIF veterans are the era products because they all went to the street. And it's like, why are we doing that when you have veterans shouting from the rooftops that cannabis helps? When you can even just look at the statistics, states that have, which I'm not saying anything about legalization because I don't even want to get into that right now, but legalization, states that do legalize, they have seen as much as a 25% reduction in opiate overdose among their population. Mm. States with good medical programs see as much as 6% reduction in opiates even being prescribed, 6% 6 less people possibly becoming addicts. But you wanna make these people choose between their second amendment rights mm. and something far less toxic, something that's not gonna make them stop breathing. How many people stop breathing and alcohol overdose? Right. One in 10 children are being raised in an, a, by a parent who abuses alcohol. We're not even talking about vets, but going back to vets, I don't know how any veteran who after educated themselves and truly looked at the statistics could, could, could not only be against this, but how could they even remain silent? Mm -hmm. Because I know that when we're deployed, we have our brothers and sisters back like no other. You're willing to risk your life, but you want to come back to the United States and you want to be quiet about something because someone may say something. Someone who doesn't like it may say something against you. So I'm going to just shut my mouth and let people keep suffering. No, hell no. I found what works. I'm keeping it and I'm keeping my guns. And that's that. And I'm going to work on continuing and changing the law. I am not about anarchy. I'm not about breaking the laws. I respect the law. I respect police. But this law, they've got it wrong. They have got it wrong, and I'm not going to shut up about it. Well, the answer to this problem is definitely with education, and the more people that understand, that's truly right. understand, they're not just led by the nose, by the, the stereotypes of, you know, someone smoking a joint being unresponsible or irresponsible. Right. But I mean, right. if you look at these laws, they're maybe they're well-meaning, maybe they're tyrannical, but they don't work for the law-abiding mm -hmm. citizen. All they're doing is just they're they're just punishing people who follow the law. Mm -hmm. So criminals this not going to. This law was created. So this that law was created fifty years ago. Yeah. Fifty years ago, they made cannabis schedule one. And I think you're going about it the right way, trying to educate people right. and trying to change legislation because we still have that option available to us. And, you know, when laws suck, we have to obey the law, but the laws that suck, we need to try to change them and get involved. And too often people are just sitting in their house, 
bitching about things and they don't actually do anything about it. Right. Helping people like you to, you know, to uh, push the message or contacting their legislators or contact. I can tell you, I can tell you, I'm in a very blue state, Delaware. It's very blue. Um, Democrats, um, are now hold majority and super majority in our house and Senate, but even still, you know, I don't always get so fired up and talk like that. It was the veteran thing. It pulls me in every time and yeah. talking to another veteran. I, I sometimes get like that when I talk about veteran issues, but um, I can actually talk very calmly and cordially. And, um, and in doing so, we were able to get our state Senate to vote unanimously yes to this. Both the Democrats completely against guns and the Republicans completely against cannabis because this does make sense. And after yeah. you educate and explain, then it did go over to the House and pass committee. It was set to pass the House floor. Again, this is the bill that would allow gun owners to keep cannabis and guns at the state level. Um, and that's that was SB 79. And, and it was scheduled to be signed by the governor, but COVID came. Mm. And like all got shut down Everything. and two years worth of work just gone. But we have another bill. We're coming back. And as a matter of fact, we had a bill for this at the national level. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Mooney and Massey. Massey is the man. <laughs> I love him. Um, they had because they know this. This doesn't make sense either. Why are we going to make people choose? between the least lethal, addictive, and safest medication or substance, people who want to use it recreationally, and their Second Amendment rights. But when we don't do that for any other medication. It's about tax. It just doesn't make it's sense. About, it's about money. I mean, if you look back, like what I wrote in my article, it's all about money. They can't tax it. They can't find a way to tax it. Just like back in the day when we talked about prohibition. I mean, pro, it's it's the same concept of prohibition. If you can't tax it, the government can't make money at it, then they'll just ban it. And that's how how it's going. Yeah, but and they can tax it and they can make money at it because they're doing it in Colorado. They're doing it in Pennsylvania. They're doing it in California. I mean, well, they say they can't. Said. They say they can't tax it. They say it's too hard to tax. I mean, that's what they're using as the guys to to ban it. And I mean, it, we can discuss whether or not it should be taxed at all. Anyhow, that's a right. whole other conversation. Yeah, I could care less either way. I, I, think, think it, I think that argument loses water now that we have the last, say, 10 years of right. where you know, the social experiment of the, making um, it legal it's, it's, at a statewide level has been, mm -hmm. it's in place. In many the only thing I'd like to say about legalization is all the states that are legalizing, look how many people are becoming instantly criminals. Mm -hmm. How many gun owners? Yeah. And no, it can needs I, to be say, can I make ATF one other point? Can I make one other point that I often find myself having to defend myself? Um, always just a select few. They'll say, well... How can you not comply? At the end of the day, I'm not against cannabis. I am just against you breaking the law and not complying. And I just want to know from those same people. So when gun bans come down or um, uh, uh, magazine round, rounds you can have in your magazine yes, limits, are you going to comply to that? And I also have another question for people like, so Delaware, we have safe storage. Anyone in Delaware who, which I have not, there's only a slightly little bit of annoying loud people who are against this. <laughs> I just want to know, do they keep their gun stored safely at night while they sleep or is it next to them? Um, because if it's, it's not stored safely, you are a non-complying lawbreaker also. Just putting it out. We All these will not comply people. Why is this the one thing that they're no, not they're touching? Not. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's interesting. As you said something earlier, it made me think of, all these politicians that are for masks and telling the people that they need to wear masks, but then you see them in restaurants or you see them out without a mask on. And it's so hypocritical and it's typical of a politician to, to push a law and then want law enforcement to enforce it uh, while they're trying to defund law enforcement. And then they turn around and they're mad at law enforcement for not having the staff to do the job that they're supposed to do. Like it's because the they're Capitol a riot. It's another class. They're the elected class. Yeah. The I mean, elite, look, they'll right? advocate taking away your firearm to defend yourself and your family. But then they but gotta, they'll bring in 30,000 troops right. to guard them during the inauguration. Right. Yep. It's, Which that it's the elected so class. Like it's the elected class taking care of the elected class. Yep. And that's all it is. They yep. could give a about either one of us. Yep, very true.
That's I'm true. Like, and, you know, can yes. I also say, keeping this swear. illegal, why are we wasting our police resources on this when there is real crimes happening? Totally I agree. will tell you, if any cop or ATF agent or anybody ever shows up at my door because I held up this stupid little bud, then I am going to, well, laugh, but then get a lawyer. But <laughs> why should no, get a lawyer come let the, after let me? Let the lawyer laugh. <laughs> let yeah, the lawyer maybe laugh that's right. You. Maybe that's right. I'll laugh on the inside. I'll keep it to myself. Because who would, like, who would waste federal employees or local police to come to my house and arrest right. this mother? Like, yeah. Why? Well, Why don't it, we fix this? And it comes we should down, be fixing it now. We're dr- yeah, and it comes dragging down to, our feet. And, it, and I just don't like it because it really does affect a lot of people. And going back to veterans, I do know a lot of veterans that stay on the pills because of it, because they don't want to give up their rights. Right. And I'm watching them suffer. Some of them I've watched commit suicide. And, you know, I'm not saying it's for everybody. And I'm not saying it's going to heal every single person. I don't want to give false hope. But I have to tell you, there was a time in my life where I never thought I was going to get better ever. And I was suffering very bad and it helped. And if it helped me and it's helping other veterans, all I'm saying is everyone should have the option and not have to choose. Well, I don't think we should ever criminalize people that need help. And if, if the cannabis is what helps you and helps other people, then you shouldn't be a criminal to use it. And I think I always try to make lemonade out of lemons. And if, if there is ever a time when maybe you have a better chance of getting this kind of legislation run through or that taken no. off of the federal form, this administration is probably going to be your best chance no. for that. Or, or of course, anyone's best chance to do that. Right. And so- can, you know, I, can I tell you something though? Unfortunately, I wish that was right. But you know, being in politics myself, you always have to follow the money. And you always have to look at who gets people elected. And a lot of that is pharmaceutical companies. And when you look at the people who don't want this to happen, I'm not sure we'll see it in this next administration. I wish that were true. I, true. I, and thought, I, it was, in theory, I thought it was about the people. Right. <laughs> about the people. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. It's all about the money, boys. But you'd, you'd think that these pharmaceutical companies would get you on board. Really thought. We're just being pessimistic. I don't know. I just, you know, and I tried to follow the law for so long. <laughs> it is all about the money. They, I mean, ugh. Don't even get me started. Mm. Well, you, you think these pharmaceutical companies would jump on board because they see that the money could be there, just like Bitcoin, right? Cryptocurrency. Nobody was on board with it. And then and then eventually now you see these big organizations like Cash App. You can buy Bitcoin through Cash App. I mean, it, yep. it's, you know, Robinhood. Now you can buy cryptocurrency through Robinhood because they see that there's money to be made in it and it's got some stability. What's the difference? Why I wouldn't think- a pharmaceutical do that? I think, you know, the answer to that, I've asked myself the same thing. They do have like synthetic uh, medications. It's like one is called Marinol. Um, but um, I, and I hope you guys can hear me because my yeah, we, we screen is frozen you. up right now. But yeah. um, there you go. Oh, okay. So I'm back. I, I think the reason why that that won't happen, that pharmaceutical companies won't just get on board is because it is so easy to grow yourself, which I do not grow. Um, but Mm. I know a lot of people who do and it's anyone can do it. And so if there's no money to be made in something that the people can grow themselves, Mm. I mean, people can make make beer, people can make wine. Yes, that's true. You know, and that is one of the arguments is people can make their own wine, but they still go to the liquor store and buy it. That's true. That is true. But I do have to say, I think medically, because it's not covered by insurance and it costs thousands of dollars a year, that is something people will grow. I mean, most people I know don't even buy it from dispensaries because it's so expensive and it's just, right. you know. That's, that's a good point. That is a very good point. Yeah. Like a cow. You yeah. know. Well, we, we can't reach the world's solutions in one giant leap, unfortunately. So it's, it's little steps at a time. So I think your legislation that you're pushing through, I think getting that removed from the ATF form would be huge. Yeah. Because yeah. that's the problem. People sign that, then they've committed a felony and they're five years in jail and they lose their rights forever. Or you say you do use it and then you can't buy right. the gun. So I think just taking it off that form would would solve a lot of problems short term anyhow. Yeah. Wouldn't completely fix the issue, but at least there'd be a Band-Aid there. Well, they did change the form. They, they added um, uh, non-binary. So they added that to the sex, the t- type of sex you are. They added oh, so there, the form can be changed. They changed it. Yeah, it they yeah. just changed it. Yeah. 
I'll tell you what, though, because I am in the press for it, um, just for medical cannabis and this and that, to protect the person who I buy guns from and or people I buy guns from, I did give up my card. I did. I, I, I had to. Um, not even just to protect myself, but to protect the person who, you know, because I checked no, I didn't want anyone to go after that owner, that gun shop owner and say, but you knew that she did. No, actually I gave up my card. Mm. And uh, the truth is I hardly ever use cannabis now. That's why that's the only little tiny butt I could find. I just searched my house for it, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the seat cushion. <laughs> yeah, the, the cocktail of of drugs is is not a good thing. And, no. and you know, even for instance, just certain antibiotics. I mean, any type of drug cocktail in someone's body can make them go screwy. My mom, they gave her a, an antibiotic and like, we thought she had Alzheimer's, like she completely lost her mind, wow. took her off the antibiotic biotic, and she came right back. So wow. knowing how powerful drugs can be, and then just giving people a bag of medicine like that, that by itself could be a problem, but then mix stuff together. That's crazy. So having when one I came thing into the that civilian... can solve all those problems is just logical and it makes sense. And Plus it's natural. It grows organic. Yeah. Natural. organic. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And I mean, the great news is it's not even something that you have to stay on all the time. You know what I mean? It's like As I was able to wean off literally everything. I'm on nothing. Coffee. Coffee is my drug. <laughs> Which speaking of that, I didn't As know. Needed, it's needed every single day. Yeah. Coffee I, mean, is needed. I haven't had mine today yet. But I just, I, I really wish... More people would talk about it. Um, I don't mean to cut you guys off. I think there's twice I did that, but it's because my 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 screen froze. I'm sorry. There's I apologize for that. And oh, I didn't. That's okay. It's all good. We okay. cl chop. We we have spirited conversations and cut each other <laughs> off all the time. <laughs> so I have a I have a a friend of mine, a fellow homeschooler, and he was uh, he had migraines all the time, and he went to the doctor and they prescribed him some drugs. Well, come to find out, years later it was the, the multiple drugs they had prescribed him were causing the migraines. So I think he was in a uh, head back problems or something. So he went to the doctor for the back problems. They gave him some, some drugs. Um, it just migraines came about. So they gave him oh, other drugs. Can you hear it? Oh, there you go. You're back. Um, but yeah, yeah so I'm sorry. That's all right. So he ended up um, it just cold turkey, got off all the drugs and migraines went away. And so, yeah, Clint right there. I mean, that's you just reminded me of that when you said that about your mother. Yeah, the cock, the cocktail of drugs in your body is just yeah. it can't be good. It, no. you, it can't be no. foreign body. Before yep. you know it, you're taking another medication to help with the side effects for the of first course, medication. Yeah. And it's Seriously. like. We always make that joke. We'll see those commercials on TV yeah. and they'll be like, you know, and this and that and that and this. Side effects like, includes death. Exactly. It's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I want to I want to take that. I think I'll just live with the problem. <laughs> yeah. Side effects include losing your Second Amendment rights. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe there, just... you know what? That is going to be my tagline for now on. I'm stealing that or borrowing it, if you don't it. mind. Side You're effects include it. losing your Second Amendment rights. That's a genius. Just remember where you heard it. Yeah, just tell people on the to, show. To Meet the press. <laughs> well, unfortunately, our time is running out. Uh, how can people uh, follow you? Learn more about what you're doing. Look into uh, the the legislation. Are there any resources you would recommend people to look into if they're having a similar issue? Well, um, you know, my name's Kim Petters. Uh, last name uh, Papa Echo Tango Tech. Tango, Echo, Romeo, Sierra. Just remember those two T's. And um, find me if anybody in any state wants to know how to change this law in their state, I can help you. It's actually not hard. I find it quite easy. It's just time consuming and it will take a lot of legwork. You don't need money. You just need to be a person, a principled person who doesn't back down and can respectfully speak to legislators and you can pass these bills and I will show you exactly how I will hold your hand through it. Just message me. That's awesome. Do, do you feel real quick? You made me think of something. Do you feel that states that are um, medical or recreational, they, they have bills already or laws already in place where people can use it uh, medically or recreationally? Do you think those would be easier or, you know, somebody lives in a state where it's totally not 
anything, no medical, no, no med uh, medicinal. No, in a lot of states, it's they, they hold one over the other like it's a carrot. Come over here, lose your rights, because a lot of the anti-gun people push stuff like that. Well, I'm saying well, like New York. Like states like? Like New York versus oh, Colorado. New York, it's me medicinal, um, but no recreational, and Colorado is both. So you lose your rights either way. Um, right, but what's happening is, so principled states um, who are creating programs, whether medical or recreational, are actually writing into the law the bills that I'm trying to pass. They are saying, and will not lose your rights at the state level. Now, everybody can always say, but it's still legal at the federal level. Yeah, well, so is buying cannabis, but I can still walk into a dispensary and go buy it in my state. Yeah. So is uh, harboring fugitives and, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, there's a lot of, a, a so, lot of yeah. federal laws. And I think Missouri, if I'm not mistaken, Missouri, Illinois, I think it was Illinois. Ugh, one of those two states. I wish I knew this off the top of my head. They wrote it into their law. Also that second amendment that you will not lose your second amendment rights for recreational or medical either. So states are doing it correct now that they're coming on board, but you know, we already had medical. So now we're having to go through in the back end. And fix right. It. So the only way to fix it, though, on the federal level is for them to get away from using the NICS system. Take I it mean, off the floor. Well, just take yeah, it or off they the could, floor, or they they could just re or deschedule cannabis. Well, that yeah, that would, would do it. That would do. solve everything. I think if anything, this administration yeah. would probably be that that might be something we should we we as a Second Amendment com community should probably push this administration to do is remo remove that from the form. And being how bad the ATF was against Trump, uh, I think that that you know the this ATF's more uh, pro Biden. Yeah. So I, I think that <laughs> yeah. we might have a good chance if anything good uh... comes out of this administration. That might be. <laughs> but, I, but I think it needs to be said though for for those out there. If you have the card and it can be traced that you have the card and you say that you don't use it on a on an ATF form and you buy a gun, you will Lied. be committing a crime yep. that could get you put in jail. Yep. So just just be careful. the The situation really sucks, but don't put yourself up for uh, you know a, a big fail. Uh, Joshua Prince has a lot of articles about this on his blog, uh, Prince Law. If you guys just want to Google that and check that out and, and uh, he gives some guidance on it, but still it's a sticky situation and every state's going to be a little bit different too. Very true. But uh, I, I definitely think it's something that should be fixed and cleared up because law abiding citizens who are taking medical marijuana to help them should not lose their second amendment rights. That's wrong. Very true. Well, it's been awesome having you on. Thank you so much for having me. I'm sorry I lost you for a second there again. That's all right. But, you, you were stoic. Uh, you were... I, really appreciate, I really appreciate you guys talking to me. And, you know, you can fact check anything that I've said. It's all true. Um, and, you know, I just, if, if you were on the fence, I hope that this would be enough to, to change your mind that, you know, you really see people are having to choose between a safer alternative mm -hmm. and their rights. And for veterans rights that they fought for. And that's just a yeah. kick in the teeth. Most definitely. Well, thank you for your service. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for yours too. Great having you on. There's lots of sponsors that make this show possible, like Mountain Man Medical. Check them out and give them your business. This episode is brought to you by Steel City Ammunition. Can't find ammo? We've got it. We'll ship it and our prices are fair. Mountain Man Medical. The right medical training and gear should be accessible to every American. Mantis. Mantis X helps shooters suck less. Meet the Pressers is sponsored by Next Level Training, Saber Red, Cutting Edge Bullets, the USCCA, ASP, Common Sense Self-Defense, and T1 Ammunition. Meet the Pressers is also generously supported by other fine companies, ranges, and our Patreon members. Thank you. Thanks for watching or listening to our show. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, click that little bell thingy so you know when the next episode's uploaded. Support us on Patreon. Come to one of our classes. Host us to come to you and do one of our classes at your location. And until next time, adieu. Thank you for watching Meet the Pressers.